So the other thing I did is when I was uh, gluing together the neck, I also decided to glue together a block of wood that's about the same width as my guitar and just hit it with sander really quick. This is not super fancy wood, but it is good marine plywood. And the reason I did this is because I want to test out painting. Uh, I don't want to just do my first try ever at a at a sunburst uh, on the guitar itself. So made a little brick and all it is is two uh, three quarter inch pieces of plywood and they're just wood glued together with the exact same uh, glue that we use to glue the neck on. And uh, we'll hit those, uh, or we'll get it warmed up in here. We'll hit this with some paint and then uh, see how it turns out before we actually do it for real on the, on the guitar body. I got my wood here uh, block and what I'm gonna do is just put this eyelet into the top of it so that I can hang it uh, while I'm doing the actual painting. Just grab some standard mason's line. I'm gonna tie it through the hook here. And what I'm gonna try to do is actually uh, make it a three-point connection. I'll see how well I do with that so that it doesn't rotate too much. Um, I don't want it hanging and then just spinning in place. Uh, if I make it a three-point connection uh, with a little bit of a triangulation, then it won't spin. We'll see how I do. Magic floating wood. Woo. I let my lacquer sit here for, that's eh, probably been about 10 minutes in uh, hot water. Um, so now I'm ready to take this out and it shouldn't uh, clump up too much on me. Um, and let's uh, go give it a few coats and see what happens. I'll probably do, you know, two or three coats just to see how it uh, sticks and uh, get an idea for spacing, that sort of thing. I don't want to use this whole can on my scrap wood because, well, that would be a waste. That's coat one. So I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes or so before I throw another coat on. I'm gonna go throw this back in the hot water so that it stays nice and warm. It's about 70 degrees in my garage right now too, so it's a decent temperature. The, the temperature of this and this and this are not too far off. And then I just gotta go kill 10 minutes of time doing something. Coat two. Third coat. All right, so we're doing our fourth and final coat of the uh, of the amber for, uh, now, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Fourth coat done. Now I'm gonna let this sit for a good 20, 30 minutes minimum until the tack goes away on it so that I can do the next coat and so that when I stick the glue to it, it doesn't pull the paint off with it. Not that it's that big of a deal on a test case, but it's still a test case. I'd like to do it right. All right, so what I realized is that I do need to put a little template on this. I'm going to need to do this for the real guitar, too, to get the nice burst. But i got to make something that I can stick in the middle of this once the first coat's done. So when I'm putting on the second coat, I get like a slight spray uh, in from the outside. But in general, I can just spray across and not, uh, well, not paint in the middle. So I'm just going to measure it up and then make something out of cardboard and some double-sided tape. That should work fine. So we are about six and a half inches by... 11 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna make something that is inset an inch on each side. That gives me four and a half inches by what? Uh, 11 and a half minus two inches uh, by nine and a half. So I'll go find some cardboard, cut it out, call it a day. Uh, while I was waiting in between coats, I just took some cardboard and this is really ugly. I think for the actual guitar, I'll actually use some you know thin veneer wood or some thick construction paper or something because this does not form all that well. The edges are kind of rough. But for the test case, this is gonna work. And what I'll do is put some double-sided tape on this uh, so it's got a little bit of a standoff uh, to it. And then we'll put on the smaller one first and do our next uh, color. And then we'll put on the bigger one after that. And then we'll do the tobacco black at that point. So we got the uh, we've got our amber that's going on right now. Then we're gonna do our brown and then we're gonna do the black. All right, time to give our uh, test some tobacco brown now. So I took my little template here and I just put some double-sided foam tape on it, which I'm realizing now is not double-sided. So I'm gonna have to get another piece of tape because uh, this side's not double-sided and stick it onto that so that we can stick it onto our board 
and uh, have a template. Well, I didn't actually have any more double-sided tape, but I did have some duct tape. So I stuck some duct tape in between the template and then I used the double-sided tape. Now we're just gonna stick this right into our center here, which I'm going to have to move the camera for a second to do, but trust me, I'm doing it. All right, so now we got our little template in the middle. That's where the center of our burst is gonna be. And now we're gonna hit it with some tobacco brown and see what happens. All right, first coat of that's done. All right, time for coat two. All right, we'll do the last uh, coat of our tobacco brown, let it sit, and then we'll throw on the black and then let that sit. And we'll see how our, uh, our test paint came up. All right, tobacco brown, all in place. And this is why you do test painting when you've never done anything like this before, because otherwise you make big mistakes and, well, you can't really fix them if you do it on the good stuff. Uh, so if you'll notice here, I have a double-sided tape in the center and I got enough overspray onto here to where that double-sided tape actually uh, left a big residue on this uh, device or on this piece of wood. And I wouldn't want to do that on the real thing because then I'd have to polish down and sand all of that up. So on the real piece, I think I'm going to actually use uh, maybe something that goes closer to the uh, board itself. Uh, maybe do a little reading on how other people do that when they're doing their templates so that they don't have that problem. Or maybe I'll stick that into the pickup holes, the actual templating, so that there's no opportunity for this sort of thing to happen. Anyway, I'm glad that I screwed it up on the test piece and not on the real guitar. All right, here we go for the uh, first coat of the black. Uh, sunburst black and uh, this has got an actual adjustable nozzle on it so right now it's going to be a vertical spray because this is horizontal so the spray pattern goes opposite of the direction of it um, but that can be pretty useful when we actually get to the guitar itself all right done one coat there uh, and i think i actually might just let that coat sit and come back tomorrow and take a look at how it is it did cover it up pretty well so that's it for tonight. We'll come back tomorrow and see where we're at. It's been 24 hours and uh, I let this dry. You can still see I've got that little square where the tape was. I know how I'm going to fix that. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. It's a, you know, maybe I want to be a little bit more of a fade here. Um, but definitely definition in the different colors on there. And you can still see the grain uh, in there. Uh, and this is just plywood too. So this isn't as nicely finished as the actual guitar body. Uh, now, the one thing I did realize when I was reading the instructions is that I was supposed to wait four hours between coats to get the appropriate drying and that sort of thing. And I waited 10 minutes between coats. So this is also going to be a little bit rougher because I think the coats had a little bit more tack on them before I started laying down more layers. That's all good. What we're going to do now is uh, start painting the actual guitar itself. And we're going to do probably four or five coats uh, of the amber first. Then we'll do three or four coats of the brown, the tobacco brown, and then three or four coats of the black. Uh, and with four hours between every single coat, this is gonna take a while. So uh, we'll try to get it all videotaped, but if I miss a coat or two, you guys aren't gonna hate me. All right, so one of the things that I needed to figure out how to do is hang this thing up uh, while I'm actually painting it. So I did just took the old caliper out and set it up and went inside my hole here. And what I'll do is put a dowel that is three eighths through there and uh, then tie the string to the dowel. And then I can hang it up without it twisting because I'll have two points on axis. And it also will allow me to spray right up to the hole itself as opposed to uh, like if I had a string coming up and it was pressed against the body, then I'd have a line here where the string is. So uh, let's go find a three eighths dowel. If I don't have one here, then I may just have to go to the store and buy one. So here you can see, I actually ended up finding a bolt that worked and then I had a nut for the outside of it. It's just a carriage bolt. So I tied my line around both sides, went up uh, actually to my garage door so that uh, 
and now there's nothing actually touching anywhere where there will be paint and I can start hitting this. Uh, one other thing I noticed uh, while I was looking at it the other day too is that I do have a few places where I gotta clean up the masking tape with an X-Acto blade, um, though now I can't find them. So I wanna take a look at that, uh, clean those up, and then we can hit it with the first coat. All right, here goes nothing. First coat of the amber, and the whole entire guitar is gonna get the amber. Uh, so there's, just layer it on. center is the most important part here because our burst is going to go just up and around here same on the back and then the neck is actually pretty important with the amber too because that's going to be the primary color i'm just going to dust the back of the neck with the tobacco brown and none of the black on the back of it all right that looks pretty good we'll come back in four hours and see where we're at We're out here for a brand new day. Uh, it's time to start doing the brown coat. We already did the amber coat on the guitar and it came out pretty good. Um, if we take a look here, we can see the amber's all done all around. Pretty even coloring everywhere that I can see. Um, no big spots or holes or gaps or anything like that. Um, what I'm gonna do for the brown is actually do it by hand. I was gonna do a template, but since the fade on a Firebird is actually pretty light, um, and that really the amber is only in this core section and then on the back of the neck I'm gonna try to just kind of do it by hand and give it a nice uh, Fade spray. And I'm gonna do that by just pulling off a little bit further when I do the spray We'll see how it turns out. I can't imagine it'll be too bad. So let's uh, let's get to cracking trying to avoid this center section here. All right, that's starting to come together. Let's let it sit for a little while and then we'll come back to another coat. Now it's starting to look a little more bursty. Oh, God. That's unfortunate. A little bit of spatter that came out of this brown. It might not have been quite warm enough. All right. 
think that's good for coat too. A mental note, when you go outside to paint and you uh, put some fresh hot water in your sink, don't, don't leave it running and then go outside and paint because then you just flood your kitchen like a dog. All right, time for our last coat of tobacco. Starting to look like a Firebird a little bit. Let's uh, get a little, a little more blending in there. Yeah, damn it, we got a few more speckles in there. It's not the end of the world, but kind of annoying. I don't know where they came from. Clean the tip, it's up to temperature. Should be, shouldn't be happening. All right, now we let this sit for another couple hours and it's on to the final, which is the black. All right, well, now that I've uh, painted the brown and the amber, I'm going to wipe it down a little bit with a, a rag, just to, it's all very dry at this point, but to try to get some, a little bit of the overspray, some of the fuzz dust, that sort of stuff off of it um, and see if we need to do more coats. So I'm just doing this lightly, um, no real pressure. And you can see we're getting a little bit of that paint off. Now we got that wiped down. You can see it did pick up a little places where there were some pits and things along those lines. I think that's gonna be okay by the time we put the black on and then we clear it, uh, it'll it'll look pretty decent. Um, there's a little bit of imperfections here or there. It's not perfect, but I've never done this before, so I wasn't expecting it to be perfect the first time. You can see I got a little bit of a blotch right in here, um, which isn't great. And a little bit over here, it looks like there's a little overspray, but uh, not too bad. I'm gonna let this uh, dry now. Try to get these corners a little bit. Ah. Yep, just did another big blotch there. So let's try to normalize that out. All right, so that's starting to look about right. One thing I did notice too is that, oh shit, I got some black blotches in here too. There's a little bit of overspray or uh, speckling that's happening from the black that made its way into the amber, which is pretty frustrating. But um, another thing I noticed as I was looking at Firebird is that they're definitely a lot more red. So this isn't gonna be a traditional Firebird anyway, because there's a lot more amber in here than there is red in the middle. They have kind of a three tone with a little bit of red. So it is what it is. Um, I'm gonna let this rest and then come back and do another coat or two and, uh, and then we'll worry about clearing it. All right, here we go for our next coat of black and I'm gonna focus mostly around the, the outside and the edges here and let some of the overspray just center it because I think my, my pattern here in the middle is actually kind of where I want it. Looking good. Maybe give it one more coat after and we should be done. And then it's clear coat time. All right, so we got all our paint done. Everything's dried uh, on the initial coats and our sunburst and it actually looks pretty good. Um, now I gotta do the clear coat on it. So let's, uh, let's grab the clear. Um, what I'm gonna use for the clear here is actually 
just to some good old Rust-Oleum lacquer clear. And I'm gonna use a ton of this stuff and then do a uh, sand pass and a polish pass. And then once that's done, I'm going to put on a couple of coats of the high quality clear and then hopefully it really just kind of shines through at that point and looks great. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's get to painting. And we're out of paint and we're done with the clear. So now I'm gonna give it 24 hours, come back and uh, see how it is tomorrow. Here we are, day after we've done the clear coat. I put about six coats or seven coats, I don't even remember what it was anymore on. Uh, and we're gonna take it down from the stand, go set it in the, in the kitchen for a little while, let it sit dry and cure for a little bit longer because it's been about 12 hours. It says it fully cures in 24 hours. And then I'll start on the polishing compound. So it's gonna be standard Actually, it's gonna be some car stuff, uh, believe it or not, to, to polish this down, and then hopefully we get a good shine out of it. So, let's take her off the rack. All right, next thing we're gonna do is I got some 1200 grit wet sanding paper and I'm gonna soak that overnight just so that it's kind of ready to go. I'm just gonna take some distilled water, throw it into a bowl, let it soak overnight, and then tomorrow we'll actually start wet sanding. And uh, once we're done with the wet sanding, we're actually gonna come over here and uh, we're gonna polish it up. And I've got three different grade of Meguiar's that we're gonna use to polish up the, the guitar. So uh, we got uh, heavy cut over here, fine cut over here, and medium cut over here. Well, they're in the wrong order. All right, so we're gonna go like that. And uh, once that's done, it should be nice and polished. Hopefully it looks pretty good. So we'll see where it goes tomorrow. So this is a pre-polish. And you can see there's still a bit of grit all along uh, this. It's gonna have to come up. I do a few little spots of uh, speckles of overspray, as you can see down here, here. But in general, came out pretty good, I think. For my first try, I'm not, not too upset with it. Um, Everything feels good, feels pretty solid. So uh, let's let it sit a little bit longer and see where it goes. Great, all right, so now we've got the uh, thing ready to stand. I have got my guitar here. I've got a rag to wipe it down. I've got some much needed coffee because it's early in the morning. And I have got a uh, soaking wet sand P1200 grit um, sandpaper. So let's uh, get to sanding. We got the uh, wet sanding done. The uh, guitar is actually pretty darn smooth right now. It's not perfect yet, it's not glossy. And if we take a look, there's still, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, there's still a little bit of residue left from the wet sanding. So what I'm gonna do is take it and get a lint-free rag and just rub this whole thing down nice and smooth. If it needs a little bit of touch up with the, the wet sanding after that, I'll do that. Otherwise, we will move on to polishing. got three fresh clean rags here that I'm gonna use. I don't have a buffer polisher for this. Uh, I don't have a drill driven one, so I'm gonna just try and do it by hand, see how it works, but a different cloth for each different cut of my uh, different polishes. We'll start with the heavy cut, uh, rub it in for a little bit, see what we get to, and then let it sit for a little while, 
then do uh, medium cut and then do uh, fine cut for uh, cleaner. And then we should have a nice polished guitar. So what I noticed is that the uh, heavy grit or the heavy cut uh, polish left a little bit of a residue on here. Not much, just a little bit of grain on it. So I'm going to go get a damp rag, try to wipe it down a little bit, let that dry and then wipe it down dry one more time. Hopefully get that last little bit of residue out so that we can go on to the medium cut and then the fine polish. There's a few small places you can see uh, where my paint didn't get all the coverage it needed to. There's a little tiny one there, a little bit on the edge here, um, but I think it's okay because this thing will just look pre-vintaged then, and that's cool, right? Next up, it's time for the medium cut. Starting to get a little shine to it now. It's not perfect, but we still have uh, one more uh, to go here. Fine cut, fresh rag, let's do it. go. Polished up. You can see the light shining off of it. All the way up to the end. And the neck actually came out very nice. You can see the nice gloss finish on that and it feels good. I think we're ready to start uh, putting some electronics in this thing. Time to take the masking tape off too and see how good of a job we did at actually masking off. So fingers crossed that we didn't cover our neck in lacquer paint. Looking along the neckline on this side, it is pretty good. There's a very small amount. You can see they got masked off right at the very top of the neck. Um, I could maybe fix that with a Sharpie or I might just leave it. And then the other side looks perfect right up at the neck joint. No overspray anywhere. So our masking held up pretty well. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. Really appreciate you just sticking around. And uh, if it wasn't very obvious, the whole point of all of this stuff is to kind of prove to anyone that's watching that you guys can do this stuff too. I'm mostly learning by doing, uh, and there's really no harm in trying it yourself. Uh, if you're hanging out uh, this late into a show about guitars when it started about uh, cars, hey, you must be interested in this sort of stuff too. So go out there and do something yourself. Tell me what you're working on.